Welcome to the ARE 5.0 video test prep series. In this video, we'll take an in-depth look at the construction and evaluation division. This division focuses on construction contract administration and the post-occupancy evaluation of projects. You'll need to demonstrate an understanding of and abilities in construction contract evaluation, construction support services, payment request processing, and project closeout. You'll also focus on issues related to bidding and negotiation processes, construction process support, and the evaluation of completed projects. You'll have three hours to answer 75 questions in this division, which includes sections on pre-construction activities, construction observation, administrative procedures and protocols, project closeout and evaluation. In the pre-construction activity section, you'll focus on construction planning and activities that occur prior to the start of construction. Let's look at a sample question. An architect is completing the bid documents for a new mixed-use building. The owner requests the architect to include in the specifications several items that are not yet fully defined. Drag the labels from the left onto the item descriptions below to identify how each of the unknown items should be included in the bid specification. Not all labels will be used. Here is the correct response. According to the Project Resource Manual, CSI Manual of Practice, Allowances and unit prices allow the architect to incorporate into the contract documents information that can't be fully specified or drawn. Alternates, on the other hand, are a way to price options for the work so the owner can finalize the scope of work after evaluating the bids. In this case, hazardous materials cost is an allowance because the full cost is unknown at the time of bidding, but the work needs to be included in the project. The earthwork cost is a unit price because the basic scope is understood but the extent of the work is unknown. The irrigation system and occupancy sensors are both alternates because they are in addition to, or in lieu of, other parts of work. This is an AE level item requiring the classification of different scope items in order to recommend the appropriate use of contract variables. In the construction observation section, you'll focus on the on-site roles and responsibilities of an architect throughout the course of construction. Let's look at a sample question. During a routine site visit, the owner tells the architect to change the layout of two interior framed walls the contractor has already framed based on the construction documents. The framing changes will not have an impact on any code related issues. The owner is adamant the walls be reframed per their new request. How should the architect address the owner's request? Ask the contractor to schedule a meeting on site with the owner, architect, and framing subcontractor to review the changes. Review the expected effect on construction costs and schedule with the contractor. Then prepare a change order for owner review. Issue a construction change directive with a requirement for time and material invoices to be submitted for the work. Include documentation of the discussion and a drawing of the revised framing in the field report of the site visit. Here is the correct response. Per AIA document A201-2017, General Conditions of the Contract for Construction, a construction change directive is appropriate when a change must take place regardless of time or cost impacts. Reviewing the expected costs ahead of completing the work is unnecessary in this situation. On the other hand, a field report alone is inadequate because this change certainly has both time and cost impacts. Finally, an on-site meeting with the sub is unnecessary as the requested changes can be fully documented by the architect. This is an AE level item requiring an assessment of a built condition in order to determine the appropriate contract change. In the administrative procedures and protocols section, you will focus on the documentation necessary for the construction process and the importance of clear written communication. Let's look at a sample question. After construction has started, the contractor finds that the specified carpet has been discontinued. The budgeted cost was $17 per square yard with a total of 3,500 square yards of carpet needed. The carpet subcontractor suggests an alternate carpet, which is acceptable to the owner. It's $18 per square yard, but the price would drop to $15 per square yard with a 4,500 square yard minimum. Due to the delay in finding the replacement carpet, the order must be expedited, which adds a $1 per square yard premium. Using the most cost-effective option, what will the cost difference be for the new carpet? The correct answer is $7,000. You'll first need to calculate the original cost of the carpet. Next, you'll calculate the cost of the two alternates, the higher price at the specified yardage and the discontinued price at the increased yardage. In both cases, the premium for expediting the order must be included. 
After deciding on the more cost-effective option, you'll subtract the original cost from the cost of the alternate to determine the cost difference. Because the dollar sign is included next to the answer box, you know the answer must be provided in dollars. This is an AE level item requiring you to analyze cost and specification information to evaluate product alternates. In the project closeout and evaluation section, you'll focus on post-construction activities. Let's look at a sample question. The contractor notified the architect that the project was ready for substantial completion. The architect inspected the work and prepared the following list of incomplete work. Click in the box next to the item in the punch list below that must be completed before the architect can issue the certificate of substantial completion. Here is the correct response. According to the Project Resource Manual, CSI Manual of Practice, reaching substantial completion does not mean all the work is completed. However, any remaining work must not prevent the owner's use of the building. The only item on this punch list that prevents full use of the building is the bathtub that doesn't drain properly. This AE level item requires you to evaluate a typical construction procedure and determine the required outcome. For more information about the Construction and Evaluation Division, refer to the ARE guidelines. Comments? Questions? Let us know. Be sure to check out the ARE 5.0 community for expert advice and tips from fellow candidates. And for more information about the content covered in each division and tips on navigating the exam interface, please watch our other ARE 5.0 test prep videos.